And on this evening, welcome to Trifo Connections edition of Money Matter Mondays, Building Kingdom Wealth with your host, Henrietta England. So come on in. We are listening to Camille Sings. She is the voice of Trifo Connections. And Trifo Connections does have exclusive rights to play her music in our live broadcastings. Again, this is Camille Sings, and she is the voice of Trifold Connections. Thank you, and come on in. He said he has great plans for me. Welcome, welcome, come on in. To share good news and tell his story. To praise his name and bring him glory. I'm chosen, being called out by name, chosen. Yes. Ooh. Don't have <clears throat> fortune or fame. Come on in, welcome. The average man doesn't know my name, no. Don't have a big house on the hill. Struggle each month to pay my bills. But I've been chosen by the king. He said he has great plans for me. To share good news and tell his story to praise his name and bring him glory i'm chosen been called out by name chosen for such a time as this he chooses the unlikely ones to bring him glory he chooses the unlikely ones to bring him praise. He chooses the unlikely ones to bring him glory. He chooses the unlikely ones to bring him praise. I'm chosen, being called out by name, chosen. For such a time as this, so many are called, few are chosen, many are called, few are chosen, many are called, few are chosen, I'm chosen, chosen, so many are called, few are chosen, many are called, few are chosen, many are called, few are chosen, I'm chosen, chosen. Ooh, I've been called out, set apart, made new, yeah, been made new, yeah. Ooh, I'm chosen, will be used, yeah. Been chosen to share the good news. Chosen to share the good news. Will be used, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. I'm chosen. All right, welcome You're and come chosen. on in the room. We're chosen. Ooh. We're chosen. All right, welcome and come on in the room on this evening uh, to Trifold Connections edition of Money Matter Mondays, Building Kingdom Wealth with your host, Henrietta England. And so I'm just going to pull up the chat because I want to see who's in the room. And so welcome. Hello, my sister from Virginia. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for making it in the room on this evening. And so for those of you, Restream wants me to make a comment at the top of the hour, which is if you um, are on Facebook, 
I would ask that you would connect your Facebook to Restream so that Restream will be able to show me your name and your profile. Um, Ms. Robinson, I already see uh, that you are already connected. But for those of you that come into the room, um, that is the way that I will be able to see your actual chat. So uh, thank you so very much for coming in the room. This is our Restore and Recover All series. This is our Restore and Recover All series. We are at take 14 in this series. So I want to welcome in all of my loyal audience, followers, friends, uh, family members, and my co-workers at Local 551. A special thank you to Restream um, that allows me to multi-broadcast on all of my social media platforms. I am live on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, uh, YouTube, and now also LinkedIn. And very soon we'll have an opportunity to be able to go live on my actual website. Um, and so I'm working on that as well. Got a lot of irons in the fire. Um, and so, you know, I'm just going to keep on plowing just like the ox that I've been talking about for the last four years. Amen. And so, hey, cousin, how you doing? Welcome in. Uh, my cousin Ernest in the room. Thank you so very much. Thanks for the shout out, cuz. And so um, also, if you have not had an opportunity to go over to like and subscribe um, to my YouTube channel, Trifo Connections, please do so. Our numbers are going up over there. Um, and I'm so thankful and grateful. And also to my LinkedIn family, thank you so very much uh, for coming in and, and following with me and connecting with me uh, for me to be able to go live on LinkedIn as well. And so Trifo Connections, we have launched our book club public group on Facebook. I have been sending out invitations uh, pretty much all the day and I'm not done yet. I will continue to send out invitations until I have exhausted my friends list. So if you received your invitation, it is no fee to come into the book club. Um, and what we'll be doing in this book club is choosing a cover for my new book that will be published on next month in September. And so I want to get the uh, followers and friends and, and co-workers and everyone involved uh, to help me to choose a cover for the book the art of budgeting and we will continue we'll have guest authors in the room um we'll also have guest publishers to be able to tell us of uh, what we need to do to get our books written and get our manuscripts out and into the world so um we're, i'm trying to put something together that is not just beneficial for me but beneficial for the body of christ amen and for the body of believers and those who are ready to take that leap of faith and get ahead go ahead and write that book write that manuscript um we will have uh also experts in the group um that will be able to help us and so our first live meeting will be held this coming saturday uh, the 27th of August at 3 p.m. And then I will be giving out more information at that time. And so we have been uh, maturing in economic awareness. In economics, uh, by now, I know you all know that it's all about you and I and how we manage our resources, how we manage our spending habits, how we manage our money, our waste, and it also tracks the apps that we use that are in place for our convenience. Now, becoming an economist is building new skills in a new mindset that are foundational. They are foundational to our growth, our stability, uh, also our productivity and our prosperity. 
So we are continuing to plow forward and reinvigorating the economy that we live in today. I got some news and some nuggets happening now to share with you all very shortly. And so uh, we're going to continue to plow forward and we want to develop economic stability amongst us. We want economic growth in development. We want work first, work force development and human capital. We also want to build our own individual assets. And so I will be, my second book will be coming out right behind um, the art of budgeting. I did put a sneak chapter um, into uh, the art of budgeting that will uh, be a transition into the second book, which is take ownership. And so take ownership will be the second book that will be coming out following that. And it will be giving you um, investment, uh, things to look out for, do's and don'ts, uh, what to be aware of when investing. And so we're also going to look at uh, approaches for improving our housing affordability. And we're going to be talking about that in depth tonight. Uh, we've been talking about mortgages for the last couple of weeks here. And so we're going to give out some uh, good information uh, for those of you that have a home or are looking to purchase a home or are looking for rental. Uh, so very important to know what is going on in our world today. Also, service integration and multi-generational approaches, wanting to bridge the gap that has been between us all of these years, because we know that a child is not born with prejudices and social injustices. That is something that they are taught, because when you put all the children in every nationality in a room together, they're going to play with one another. They're going to help one another. They're going to build with each other's bodies to be able to reach what it is that they are trying to get. Okay. They are very resourceful. And so we want as adults to bridge the multi-generational gap that separates us. And we also want to look at of food insecurities in our school systems for our children. We know that our children, uh, the majority of the world, uh, the children have gone back to school and you can see all over Facebook that parents are covering their children in prayer. That is so very important that we cover our children in prayer. Do not allow them to leave home without praying over them and possibly anointing their head with oil. Amen. Uh, to make sure that the enemy does not see your child and pray that it will go somewhere else. Amen. And leave our children alone because our children are our future and we need them to get their education so that they also can become great kingdom citizens. Hallelujah. And so we know that economics is a branch of knowledge. It is a branch of knowledge and it is concerned with what? production. And so we've been talking about production, producing your seed, planting your seed, allowing your seed to die and germinate so that it can uh, come forth and bring a harvest. And so I just want to show it, show you all right now what my garden uh, harvested. Hallelujah. And so uh, I took this out of the garden uh, this week and I cooked these collard greens fresh from my garden back there. And so I don't know if it's just a little bit hotter uh, to this year, but uh, some things are going uh, really slow uh, in the garden this year. But uh, I will continue to show you all as uh, we go forward. And uh, my cousin and I, uh, Ernest Sadler, we've been working on this garden and, and we were getting things done and, and the, uh, the greens are so, so delicious. He's been eating them for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Amen. And so also 
It's about the consumption, things that we consume, um, and also the transfer of wealth. And what I've been doing, my assignment in this time and in this season is to prepare all, amen, for the transfer of wealth that is coming in this time, in this season, and in this decade to prepare us for our next, to propel us forward. Amen. And so <clears throat> our goal here at Trifo Connections is to maintain fiscal fitness in these times of economic uncertainty and build kingdom wealth God's way. Last week and the week before, we've been talking about the kingdom economy and the kingdom economy is not... Um, ran like the world's economy. The world economy is take, 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 and the kingdom economy is give, give, give. And I know it may not make sense to some people, but that is the way it is. Amen. And so we want to prepare ourselves for the transformation that is going to last us a lifetime. And so we are teaching our Together We Grow Master Series uh, will be taught this fall, beginning October the 8th, 2022, and it will be a six-week course. So for six weeks, starting October the 8th, you will be able to come in to our Together We Grow Master Series by simply going to my website to register for uh, to become a member of Trifold Connections. You're not paying for the course, amen, because the course is valued at $1,600. You are paying for a membership. I will have the courses up and running soon, um, but I do have to get them copywritten and patent before I release them on my website. So please be patient with me um, as I get these things underway. Now, the Together We Grow Master Series, although we do have a private Facebook group, uh, the classes are taught on my private Zoom meeting room. So not to worry. If you're not on Facebook, it's okay. Not a problem. Uh, you can simply go to my website. You can uh, scan the QR code in my background. That will take you directly to my website. Or you can uh, go to Trifold Connections with an S llc.com to register today and to become an exclusive member of Trifold Connections. And so as consumer and as uh, kingdom citizens of the commonwealth of the kingdom, we must be prepared and ready for any given situation. Yes, thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mays. Thank you and, and welcome on in. Hallelujah. Thank you to all of those that are in the room, those that I can see and those that I'm unable to see. Thank you so very much for coming in. And so God does not desire to have his people in limbo land somewhere, right? And we don't know what's going on. We in the dark, we fiddling and fumbling around. No, he wants us to be well aware and well prepared and ready for the wealth transfer that is in this season. And so am I my brother's or my sister's keeper? Yes, I am. And I do take it seriously. And, and anyone on here that knows me know that I am a, a, a mother bear when it comes down to people that I love and I care for. And so uh, at this time, if we embrace one another, and love each other unconditionally, we can make this change. We have to make the change for the future generations of our children, our children's children, and our children's 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 children. Amen. We need to be prepared and ready to leave them a legacy and an inheritance. Amen. And so we want to make sure that change is not 
always the easiest thing to do. So that's why we have to embrace it. With everything that's going on today, we like to look back and we like things to be the way they used to be. You know, just like when 9 uh, 11 happened in 2001, it changed our world forever. And so this that is in our land now, uh, the COVID uh, 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 19, the monkeypox, all those things is changing our world that we live in. And so we want to be the change that we want to see in our world today. And change is necessary in this time and in this season. And so we must learn to conserve and reserve in this season. Let's get hungry. Let's stay the course. Amen. Let's stay the course. Let's persevere. Let's preserve. Remember when our grandmas and them made preserves in them jars? Amen. Hallelujah. It is time for us to preserve and let's be intentional on purpose. Let's just be intentional on purpose. And so we have some things that we call now that is happening now in our world today. And so as of August the 19th of 2022, the United States mortgage lenders are starting to go broke reporting Bloomberg magazine. And so the uh, it is a sudden spike in the lending rates. And it's a wave of failures that's coming that could be worse, could be worse than what we suffered 15 years ago when the market crashed due to predatory lending. Now, this is different than the predatory lending, but we are experiencing an increase in our prime lending rate. And we know that the feds are going to be meeting soon and they're planning to double the rate again. So with that being said, market watchers are expecting a string of bankruptcies broad enough to trigger a spike in layoffs in the industry that employs hundreds of thousands of workers. That's hundreds of thousands of workers and potentially an increase and some lending rates. And so we've been talking about these lending rates for the last month, right? Preparing, getting you prepared and ready for what's to come. And so more of the business is now, yes, more of the business is now controlled by independent lenders, not like it was back in 15 years ago. And so now we have more independent lenders that are out there and with mortgage volumes plunging this year many are struggling to stay afloat now listen at this this is some good news well not good news but this is great news to share and to contemplate on and to have a conversation it's a conversation starter with you and your family Welcome in my sister from Mississippi. She showed me all that love down there, you all. Then say hello to Beatrice Henderson. Hallelujah, evangelist. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sis, for coming in. So first guarantee, a company that according to court papers is majority owned by fixed income giants, Pacific Investment Company, filed for bankruptcy. You know, here in Chicago, we have Guaranteed Field, right? The White Sox Park, they named it Guaranteed Field. So First Guarantee has now filed for bankruptcy. What does that mean to us, right? <laughs> Included in the court documents, First Guarantee owes about $418 million to Flag First Bank and Customers Bank. First Guarantee was reported having 600 employees prior to filing the bankruptcy file. They fired 471 of their 600 employees due to the crash crunch. And what we see 
going on today. Now, on the more up note of that, for Freddie Mac and Freddie Fannie Mae, the increase in mortgage rates is not so dire, right? These government-backed companies can often get emergency funding from government-sponsored enterprises, GSEs. That's government-sponsored enterprises. If they run into difficulty, right, or into difficult times. So when they do this, they're not always bailed out because now they have to show the government and the Federal Reserve that they'll be able to stabilize after they dump the money in. And so, and they'll be able to recover also. And so what we've been talking about, restore and recover all. So in the last uh, downturn, so many banks, if you remember 2007, 2008, the downturn in the market, so many banks, right? They went sour on their loans and they were struggling in their assets of all kinds that hundreds failed. And non-banks, they went belly up during that time. And so Bloomberg is also reporting, I've been keeping you all abreast as well about apartment hunting, right? <laughs> and so, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And so Bloomberg is also reporting 41% increase in rentals for a one bedroom apartment, 41% increase. Now in New York is the highest is listed as the most expensive in the market for rental. And they're coming in for a one-bedroom apartment, $3,780 in New York for a one-bedroom apartment. Also, San Diego, uh, no, not San Diego, San Francisco is a close second in their one bedroom apartment is running for $3,100 a month. We're talking about a month. So this is definitely affecting uh, the budget. The most affordable cities for rents, for rentals uh, now are Akin, Ohio, and their monthly rent is $640 a month. You can find a one-bedroom apartment in Akron, Ohio. Wichita, Kansas is at $700 a month. Lubbock, Texas is coming right in at $700 a month as well. Shreveport, Louisiana is $740. And Lexington, Kentucky is at $760 a month. So in real estate news, home builders are saying that the United States is in a housing recession. Again, the real estate news is saying, amen, that home builders are saying that the U.S. is in a housing recession. Now, I assure you, that we must bunker down during these economic troughs in economic conditions that we are facing. We must take another look at our household budgets and our income analysis monthly statements to making sure that our assets minus our liability is equaling out to capital gain. We must learn to save also in this season and get into some of that investments that's going to bring us a higher return. Who? thank you, Lord. We know that the feds, they're going to be meeting again in a couple weeks. It won't be long now. September is right around the corner and they're planning on doubling the prime lending rate again. And so that means that it's going to cost us more, amen, in our pockets and in our household budgets. So we need to be prepared and ready 
for economic crunch and hyperinflation that is threatening our economy. I'm going to say that again. We must be prepared and ready for the economic crunch that we're in and the hyperinflation that is threatening our economy. So welcome in again to Restore and Recover All Series Take 14. Our scripture reading on this evening for economic economy restoration is coming from Mark, the ninth chapter, beginning at the first verse, and then we're going to drop down to the 12th verse, and I am reading out of the NIV uh, version of the Bible on this evening. So go with me now to Mark, the ninth chapter, the first verse, and then drop down to the 12th verse. And he said to them, truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. Verse 12, talking about Jesus, hallelujah, God. And Jesus replied, to be sure, Elijah does come first and restores all things. Why then is it written that the son of man must suffer much and be rejected? So here again, we got to go through. We got to hold on. We got to be strong. Amen. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Things that you don't understand. Situations that's happening to you. You know, because you can't always talk to your girlfriend or, or, or your best male friend because sometimes they don't understand. We have to take it to God in prayer. Who can make the miracles, the signs and the wonders, make them happen for you right before your very eyes. You must trust and believe. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And now go with me to 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. That's 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, beginning at the sixth through the 10th verse. And this is in the NIV version, again, of the Bible. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due season. So what is he calling us to do? To humble ourselves. And to be humble is to be meek, mild-mannered, you know, not reacting to situations, but being proactive in our responses. Because someone says something mean and nasty to you, does not mean that you have to respond back mean and nasty to them because then you take yourself out of alignment for the blessing that God is going to bestow upon you because then he sees that you are not yet ready for the elevation. And so he tests us to see if we're ready. He brings on these situations because our God, he is a great God. He's wonderful awesome and amazing, but he's also terrible. And that's in his word. Amen. And so we, we want to be alert and sober minded. Your enemy, the devil, he is continuing to prowl around to see who he may devour. He's going around like a roaring lion, you know, and, and seeking those out that are off guard that are not prepared, that are not ready. You know, any little small news, right? We're losing it. No, we have to remain in this word, hallelujah, and get the word daily and meditate on it and allow Holy Spirit to speak to your spirit to encourage you in the Lord, hallelujah. Verse nine says, resist him, standing firm in your faith standing firm in your faith 
because you know that the family of believers, we are a family of believers. We are the body of Christ. Amen. And so we thank you, God. Hallelujah. He said the family of believers throughout the world. So we're not the only ones going through this, this, this season that we're in uh, with, with all this uh, uh, disease and, 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 and so on and so forth is in the land, right? It's not just here in the United States of America. It is everywhere, in every country, in every village, in every parish. It is there. And so the Lord wants us to be aware, right? that the world is going through the same sufferings, that we're going through those same sufferings, those same growing pains, right? And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered for a little while, he ain't gonna let you suffer long, but you gotta go through. Amen. He want to see where you at. He want to see if you're going to get back up when you get knocked down. He going to see, you know, how you going to handle that situation. Are you going to pop off with your attitude or are you going to keep your mouth or are, are you going to respond and be proactive instead of reactive to the situations? Are you going to take your tongue and hurt the next person because you're hurting? Lord, thank you, Jesus. He said, God himself will restore you and make you strong. God will restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. Got to do it. Hallelujah. He said, to him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Our opening prayer of thanksgiving. Pray with me now. Father God, we thank you for your amazing grace. You are so wonderful and so kind and so faithful. And we thank you for your unfailing love. We thank you, Father, that you give us another opportunity, hallelujah, to get it right. We thank you that although we fall down, Father God, we can get back up. We can ask for forgiveness, hallelujah, and then you will forgive us. That's what your word tells us, that if we come to you with a repentance heart, that you shall forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, Father God, we thank you for life. We thank you for freedom. We thank you for the very breath that we breathe, oh God. We don't take it for granted. We thank you, oh God, that we have a sound mind, hallelujah, and that we can love on each other, hallelujah, and that your power, it resides on the inside of us. And so we thank you now, Father God, that by your stripes, we are healed, hallelujah, set free and delivered. And so, Father, forgive us now if we sinned against thee in any way, knowingly or unknowingly. Get, uh, give us a clean heart and clean hands so that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. And so help our stubbornness, Father God. Help us in our stubbornness to receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, to lead us and to guide us into all truth. And so help us now to come out of being stubborn. Help us to forgive one another for the wrongs that we may have done. Father God, help us now because you already said that if we have unforgiveness in our hearts, that you're not even listening to us. And so Father God, clean us up, hallelujah, from the inside out hallelujah, and give us clean hearts, clean hands, a renewed mind, restore us, oh God, rebuild us on a solid foundation. And so, Father, I ask you now that you would bless the hearers, 
and the doers of your most holy word. Open up our ears on this evening to hear you, Father, speaking to us about the kingdom economy and about restoring us back unto you, hallelujah, and about the wealth transfer, Father, that is in this time and in this season. May we not experience what the world is experienced with contractions and troughs and recession, oh God, hallelujah. May we still be able to save and invest, oh God, hallelujah. Keep a roof over our head, Father God. We don't take it for granted because many are losing their homes. They have already, the economy have reported that there are going to be many bankruptcies. There are going to be many job laws. And so, Father God, you said that you would supply every one of our needs according to your riches and glory. And so, Father God, we are depending on you, hallelujah, to come through as you have done in the past. We're looking for you to do it again today, oh God. And so we thank you now. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And we thank you, hallelujah. And so, Father God, as we, hallelujah, get ready to go into your word on this evening, oh God, hallelujah, open up our ears to hear, open up our hearts to receive, hallelujah. Let, our not, let not our hearts, hallelujah, be just of stone and where we don't want to hear what the word of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord is saying, hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. And so, Father, as I go before your people, I ask now that you would decrease this vessel of flesh that is sitting before your people, oh God. Increase your Holy Spirit within me to talk about the kingdom economy and how you're ready, Father God, to restore us and recover all, all those things that were stolen from us, Father. Hallelujah. That you are restoring it and you are going to bring recompense and restitution unto your children in this time and in this season. We will be forever so careful to give you all the praise, the worship, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And so God has an economic plan just for you. Yes, he does. He has an economic plan just for you. If we are to be wise stewards in this economic contractions and troughs, right? We must apply the principles and the precepts of economics, amen? savings and investments and be prepared to learn new skills and change our minds about the way that we used to think amen and the way things used to be you know as i mentioned earlier when the hour first started about 9 11 it changed our whole world and here we are again and in, in, in 20 uh, 19 is when it came in, but we didn't know until March of 2022, and it has changed our whole world. You know, people are still coming down uh, with the virus. One of my cousins just called me on today, you know, came here to visit. I was supposed to go and see her, but she called me this morning and told me, she said, cuz I didn't come down with COVID-19. And so I'm just believing God for her healing. Thank you, Father. And so we often get stuck in what was. We get stuck there. We want to stay right there because we don't want to, we don't want to travel out to the unfamiliar. We want to stay where we're familiar. And so we must face these uncertain times that we are living in with vigor and zeal. We must face these uncertain times that we are living in with vigor and zeal. Thank you, Father. Knowing that the plans that God has for us far exceeds the world's plan. Knowing that the plans that God has for us far exceeds the world's plans. Principles are both spiritual and natural laws principles are both spiritual and natural laws. Precepts are general rules intended to regulate 
behavior. Um, yes, Lord. Or regulate your thought pattern. What are you thinking? What's on the inside, both naturally and spiritually? And so I was speaking with one of the members of Trifo Connections Together We Grow Master Series uh, the other day, and we were speaking about principles and precepts. So if you break the law, both natural or spiritual law, there's going to be a cause and an effect. It's going to happen. So if you jump off the third floor story of a building, the law of gravity is going to bring you down to an injury and not to exclude death. Why? Because we broke the law of gravity. When you work for a company and you refuse to adhere to their policies and their procedures, deciding that you will do whatever it is that you want to do. And then you will say whatever it is that you want to say and be disrespectful uh, to the management and staff and your coworkers. You already know it's inevitable that you will be disciplined not to exclude termination. You know, people always say, oh, they fired me. No, you fired yourself. Take responsibility for your own actions and be self-disciplined and self-control. But the main thing is to take responsibility for our own actions. Amen. And so these are built-in laws that are put in place to bring order, to bring safety, right? Respect, right? Hallelujah, God, and to ensure our rights as citizens and as kingdom citizens and protect us from abuse by other people, by organizations, and by the government itself. When God's laws are broken and there is no repentance in sight, the people suffer. Ooh, when God's laws are broken and there is no repentance in sight, the people suffer. God's word tells us in Ezra, the seventh chapter, it's in the Old Testament, verse 26 in the NIV version. It says, whoever does not Obey the law of your God and the law of the king must surely be punished by death, banishment, confiscation of property, or imprisonment. What do we see going on in our land today? In Romans 2, the 23rd verse, NIV. It says, you who boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? Deuteronomy 1 and 17. It says, do not show partially uh, partiality and judging. Hear both small and great alike. Do not be afraid of anyone. For judgment belongs to God. Bring me any case that's too hard for you and I will hear it. In Romans 3 and 31, it says, do we then make void the law through faith? Do we make it void the law through faith? God forbid. This is the King James Version. It says, yea, we establish the law. We establish the law. So many have come before us to say that we are no longer under the law, but under grace. Having many believe that the Old Testament, the Old Covenant is null and void. We do live by grace and faith and careful to observe 
and obey the law. I have communicated many times over that there is no room to dig a ditch for another to fall in. You might as well dig two ditches because you're going to fall into the same ditch that you digging for someone else. God will bring justice. He will bring vengeance upon you. And this is not revenge. Vengeance is punishment inflicted or retribution exacted for an injury or a wrongdoing that has been caused by another. It is God's justice system. And so in Romans 12 and 19, we're almost done. Hallelujah, God. In Romans 12 and 19, NIV, it says, do not take revenge. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. This is the kingdom principle and precept. There is no way around it. When a king speaks, he makes a decree, and a decree is a law that cannot be changed. The society that we live in today mm, has changed many of God's laws and rules. But as citizens of the kingdom of God, we must uphold his laws and his rules, no matter what laws society is changing. And when laws or rules are broken, there is cause in effect. There is consequences. The commonwealth of the kingdom says in Deuteronomy 8, 17 through 20, you may say to yourself, my power and my strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord our God, for it is he that gives us the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore, swore to our ancestors as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God mm, and follow other gods, and worship and bow down to them. The Lord says, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Like the nations the Lord destroyed before you. So you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. And my final thoughts on today, I like to leave you with the power of laws. When we obey the laws, they are keys, they are seeds, and they produce a harvest. If you desire to become successful, there's no magic in that. Amen. All you have to do is obey the principles and the precepts. It is a surefire way to success, wealth, riches, prosperity, health, and a good life. So use your keys, your principle, precepts, rules, and laws to protect yourselves against the schemes of the world. And so I'm going to leave you with eight principles and precepts eight principles and precepts, and we'll continue to build as we go along. Amen. Principles and precepts are universal. All around the world, same song. Amen. Principle and precepts, they're permanent. They're not changeable. 
principles and precepts work anywhere. Amen. And for anyone that utilizes the principles and the precepts. Principles and precepts are not partial. We read that in scripture tonight, right? No partial judgment. Oh, you get a pass because you my favorite person, but you did no, don't go that way. Principles and precepts, they guarantee successful results. You want to be successful. You want wealth and riches in your house as God promised us, right? Obey the principles and the precepts of God's word. Hallelujah. Principles and precepts can never be broken. <laughs> never be broken. Principles and precepts have inherent judgment. As I gave you the example of a person jumping off a three-story building saying that they can fly. The laws of gravity is going to bring them down. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Principles and precepts protect the product. Amen. You and I, God designed us. Hallelujah. He knows what it takes to protect us and to keep us. Hallelujah. And so he protects us by putting laws and rules in place. Amen. And so we thank you for coming in this week with us on Money Matter Mondays, building kingdom wealth with your host, Henrietta England. And so I'm going to close out and I'm going to make some announcements on this evening. And so I just want to thank uh, again, Beatrice Henderson, my good friend, um, in Lexington, Mississippi. If you all visit Lexington, Mississippi, make sure you stop by Agape's restaurant. It is on uh, Highway 12, uh, right between Highway 12 and Highway 17. Thank you so much, Brother Mays, for coming in. Uh, a loyal uh, follower, thank you so very much. To my sister, uh, Ann Robinson, thank you again. Hello, my sister, I am praying for your strength. Hallelujah. And I thank my cousin Ernest also uh, for coming in. And now here come the trolls, but we will not be paying them any attention on this evening. And so we just thank you all so very much uh, again for coming in um, and uh, saying hello and being a blessing uh, for coming in on this evening. And so I'm just going to close us out and uh, share some graphics with you about what uh, Trifo Connections uh, is doing. Okay, let me get to the next song. One second. All right. And so we have a lot of exciting things coming up. Uh, Trifo Connections and We Just Look This Way have partnered together with the 17th Ward Alderman, David Moore. And we will, uh, what happened? Okay. And we will be um, supporting their back to school in 2022, bringing uh, positivity to 79th Street uh, through talent. And so dancing on the nine is coming up. It is a youth talent showcase. We have vocalists, poet, poets, dancers, rappers, musicians. Um, this is all going on on September the 24th of 2022 from 12 noon to 3 p.m. So you want to come on out, bring your lawn chairs. Um, we'll have local vendors there, food and beverages, uh, trifle connections, and we just look this way. Um, we are hosting um, also at that same event, our end of the summer free barbecue extravaganza. And so you want to come on out and uh, bring your own lawn chair uh, to the Renaissance Park, which is located at 1300 West 79th Street in Chicago, Illinois. For more information on this particular event, you can give me a call at 708 553 0002. 
or you can send me an email to info at trifoconnectionsllc.com. We will be servicing families in the West Chatham, Auburn Gresham, Inglewood, and Chicago Lawn communities. Um, we are looking to serve um, over uh, anywhere between three to 500 people on that particular day. And we will continue to give, um, give out the school supplies, backpacks, uh, and things to that nature until they run out. So please come on out and support us. If you like to make a donation, we do take donations at my website, uh, which is trifoconnectionsllc.com. Also in the month of September, we will be going down and supporting Dr. Myers in Natchez, Mississippi for Seeds of Change Resource Foundation. And that is September the 30th through October the 1st. Um, and she did send me the flyer uh, for the entertainment uh, for the uh, fourth annual Bikers Weekend. It is her annual fundraiser for my father's house, which will serve as a transitional home uh, for veterans, seniors, um, persons with disabilities, and the homeless. And so this is the live entertainment, which is Saturday at 5 p.m. It's a blues show featuring uh, Theotis Ely, uh, LJ Eccles, Frank Guitar Man Rimmer. <laughs> Special performance uh, by the Memphis Grizzly Grannies and Grandpa's Dance Team. Oh, that should be really, really special. So you are welcome again uh, to go to uh, my website and you can support us there with the gift of giving as we give back to the communities uh, all over the United States of America because many people are hurting at this time and Trifo Connections membership is open and you wanna get registered for our Together We Grow Master Series. And so we wanna thank you all for coming in this week. Blessings and favor unto you. And again, we thank you for coming in. That's all I have for you this week. Do have a wonderful blessed week further and know that God loves you and he's ready to give to you the wealth transfer that is in this season. Let us get prepared and ready as we grow together, as we stand together, and as we endure together. Amen. We'll see you next Monday for Money Matter Mondays, Building Kingdom Wealth with your host, Henrietta England. Bye for now.